Hey there, independent Scientologists. Discover a new perspective to your bridge by visiting ao-gp.org. Get in session with remote auditing using the Theta Meter. Are you curious about where you stand? Head on over to ao-gp.org now and take our free personality test. Join the growing group of independent Scientologists today. Hi, and welcome to another AOGP, the Advanced Story of the Great Plains, Scientology Outside of the Church podcast. I am your host, Jonathan Burke. Uh, we're going to do part two of Scientology is Bad, or Why Scientology is Bad. Real bad. <laughs> I'm here with Scientology Girl and Arthur Madakis, <laughs> and we're just going to take right up from where we were at in part one yesterday. So topic of all topics, probably one of the biggest things dun, dun, dun. that's been made fun of and everything is aliens and odd beliefs. <laughs> yeah. Go so far as to say that we're an alien cult. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're we're an, we're, an, we're an alien cult. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this over to Arthur real quick because he'll probably have something to add. How many other religions bring up quote unquote aliens on this planet? Oh, off the top of my head, and I'm not a hundred percent, but I believe the Mormons, um, yes, yes, Mr. Smith, um, I believe they have something like this in there, mm -hmm. and probably more in the indigenous peoples um you know like the native yeah the yeah. aborigines of australia um you know the native indians um in the americas and the mayans and um really old cultures mm -hmm. um they're in cave paintings they're in hieroglyphs they're everywhere and it's funny actually now that you asked me that there's not a great deal of that in western mm -mm. religions except for the mormons right and now, scientology the, yeah. the, the west the western well i don't even say just the western religions but you know a component of that is the not so easily seen the not so common seen the 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 angels and demons because you know it could be that angels could be perceived as was something from above admittedly admittedly you know off off the planet surface so to speak and so that's not a i don't mean that's not a huge stretch by any means well here's a verse from revelations 14 6 then i saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth to every nation and tribe and language and people so Mm. They're, they're generally they're generally considered from the sky mm. or from heaven and heaven is above so you know they they, they, they could definitely be correlations mm. there well and and i will cite yeah. the the um eric von donican book from the early 70s chariots of the gods and the the nazca lines down in peru where you've got the desert floor and you don't see it until you're up in an airplane but you see these huge huge it's huge it's so huge <laughs> it's a huge thing it that that you you can't tell what it is until you're up in the sky and and that's one thing and then the other thing is the the book that i mentioned in the earlier podcast uh gods of eden by william bramley where mm. he he researches why man wars with man and gave up the study seven times because the the end result was so fantastic that he couldn't believe it. And he finally surrendered to the fact that there was off world influence in what was influencing mm. man to be so warlike. And, uh, and he actually cites, and I'm repeating myself from an earlier podcast, but he, he, he cites two references from uh, Scientology and LRH in that mm -hmm. uh, the volunteer minister's handbook, I think in the technical dictionary. Um, so uh, you know, there are other other angles on this that people can look at as far as, quote unquote, aliens and odd beliefs. But I, I think the alien part, you'll find out what the alien part is. And it isn't like it's uh, what do they call it? Typically, they say in their origin story, it's not an origin story. Mm -hmm. For Scientology mm -hmm. or Dianetics. It's just something that happened in the vicinity of planet Earth and planet Earth was involved in it and it shows up on the meter like a mofo. 
when you're you're ready mm -hmm. for it. It reads like crazy, and the relief you get from it as a being is it, it, it's above remarkable. It's above remarkable. Mm. And that's the thing is with Dianetics and Scientology, the subject and independent Scientology, um, less so the, the corporate church because they're of the alterations to the technology, but it still works even though they alter it. You have to take into consideration that um, you would think that as long as this civilization has been around 10,000-ish, 11,000-ish years since the quote-unquote uh, big explosion that happened in Greenland, we'd be getting along better than we are and things would be a lot better than they are. And that was one of the reasons why mm -hmm. Hubbard looked into this and he was just as blown away as everybody else was. He didn't think past lives were a thing when he got into Dianetics. He told people it's hogwash. And then the next day came out and said, no, no, it's true. It works. And he found out himself. I mean, this was in late 1950s, but, you know, so, I mean, not everything is easily inspectable. And that's the neat thing about Dianetics and Scientology. It's not a bad thing. It, and Christ, I mean, aliens and past lives, odd beliefs being one of those, past lives being one of those things, these things come up in all kinds of other walks of life in other places on this planet long before Scientology was ever around. I mean, uh, yeah. uh, you know, removing demons is done by the, the, the Catholic Church, and they've been doing it for over a thousand years and and that's that's right. my my one of two arguments about the stuff that we uh, are perceived as crazy for so if there wasn't such a thing as well these things i mean if you look anywhere across the world the stories are similar yeah. the, the they might call it different things or whatever but the stories are similar i mean you could even say that the um, the Dianetics thing with the, the volcano, the hot lava, mm -hmm. is akin to hell. Mm -hmm. And then there's, you know, the angels and the yep. demons. And, you know, and I, I don't want to get too into it because I know it's upper level stuff, but it's 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 relevant. <laughs> yeah. And then you, you, you mm -hmm. get... Um, well, that's I why mean, you put it on the cover, is to get people to go, that's, that seems important in... in significant to me it's just, and it's just a volcano yeah but you're right yeah it, it 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 can represent something i mean that's why i put these pictures on the covers of the books back in the in the early 70s is to re-stimulate people to say you know i'm going to read this book that, that that's something about that mm. and mm. That, i didn't mean to cut you off there but it's 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 very uh important to, to look at these things from the you know i have an idea hey yeah <laughs> sort of a thing yeah. that the, the heaven and hell thing and all of that stuff you know did one thing mimic another did the heaven and hell thing come from the ot3 incident mm. i mean i mean if you if if you've done the material and you've listened to his lectures on the briefing course uh from the 1960s 61 to 66 67 you start to get the understanding of where all of this religious viewpoint stuff comes mm. from mm that it was put there yeah it, it wasn't it, it wasn't just something yeah. that was similar to something else it was put there now you can believe that or you cannot believe that and, and you can say it's an odd belief but the thing is is you will personally run into it yeah and it is yeah. very very yep. interesting and it has a very odd feeling about it and you go oh, okay now i get it so he, mm -hmm. I, I mean I, I believe it or not he was right yeah my second argument is that there's been okay if you have to think about the universe right it is incomprehensibly huge i mean you just look at one one of the um the black holes uh ton i think it's 816 or is it 618 or 816 hold on that's the that's the Kansas sure. city area code so i think it's not 816 Sorry, that's a joke. Uh, yeah, 618. I mean, this thing, <laughs> this thing is almost 300,000 times bigger than our sun. Yeah. And uh, that is just a black hole. That right. is not even the entire universe. So my argument is that if we really consider Earth to be 
the end all of end alls and, and this is where everything happens and it's just this tiny little spot speck in this one galaxy when there are trillions of galaxies out there uh, it can, you've got to be incredibly narrow-minded to believe that we're alone like mm. there, there has to be other life somewhere they've even found planets I, I, I don't remember the names of them but they've they've literally found planets that could probably sustain life yeah just recently they found mm. they found planets in the goldilocks zone that have oxygenated atmospheres and are water planets like our own yeah so mm -hmm. that Fine, tells you finally something. after several 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 years and and with then due in part to the new telescope they're able to see these things and they they say mm. they're all over the damn place mm. you just have to mm -hmm. be able to be patient and find them because our particular methodology is it's pretty slow it's like a needle in a haystack given how how large the universe mm. is to your point yeah now as for whether or not they've been visiting us i'm skeptical about that personally okay. and i know you you That's aren't because okay. you you eat this shit up <laughs> well I, I, you know have i have i met one if i did i didn't know it right okay but yeah. um, mm. i would have to say that you know absolutely they 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 are here and they walk among us and and you know i mean clear for no other reason than to to watch monkeys in zoos right you know type of a thing but i don't mm -hmm. think that, that is the case i think it's it's a lot more and, and it's one of the areas that i've looked into and studied more probably than anything other than scientology and dianetics you think they 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 could possibly have the same sort of i like to call it consciousness or you would probably say uh they are, are they thetans too or are they something different yeah I, they're they're thetans just like we are mm. but they have a completely different background and there are those supposedly those individuals who they marvel at the fact that we have emotion they don't have emotion Mm. They may not have been installed mm -hmm. with a reactive mind, so to speak. But they, I mean, you know, it's it's the the probably the commonality of the whole thing is is that nobody got the memo. Mm. <laughs> nobody got the memo on why we are here. They didn't. We didn't. This sort of ties into mm -hmm. um, how we're we're perceived perceived as conspiracy theorists. Why? Why do you think that that might be, Arthur? <laughs> I love that word, conspiracy theory. Well, two words, like just those two words together, is a bit of a joke as well. Yeah. Um, and I mean, like everything we've covered so far, um, it 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 all goes into what's acceptable and what's not acceptable and the way things are created the way they are if you step outside of what is acceptable then you've already been labeled and yeah. for somebody who doesn't you know put an effort into trying to learn more you know we'll just use those those robotic sentences as their conclusion um and and it makes it really difficult to be able to have open discussions, curious discussions with anybody um, because they'll either look at you funny or, you know, you'll find those people where you can be like, okay, well, what do you think about this? And have an open discussion about it, you know, a, a logical learning discussion as opposed to just being cut off, shut off, labelled, um, those kinds of things. Um, yeah. It's kind of like matrix and, mentality. Well, and, and well, and I, and it is a it is robotic as well. You know, it's it's very it's very programmed. Um, it, you know, because like you hear the same kind of things from people that you know the tinfoil hat. The amount of people that that have said that to me is just like, well, you know, I hear what you're saying, but do you reckon you could be more original about what your opinion towards me is? But right. they're not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it, it's always struck me that somebody says, you know, well, conspiracy theory or conspiracy theorist. It, to me, it's it, you're almost just saying there's no such thing as a withhold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then when, when yeah. you look yeah. at it that way, you go, uh, I mean, it, it doesn't take a millisecond for you to go, well, that's not the case. Yeah. 
I mean, the thing with the Simpsons, yep. for example, where, yeah. where they repeatedly predict things, right? Yeah. Is it, a, is it, is it, is it having a conspiracy theorist mentality to see something right before your eyes and question why it is so, uh, I mean, coincidental, mm -hmm. you know? Well, I mean, it, like, like Hubbard says, and you, you, re, you frequently quote, you know, laughter is rejection. You know, it's part of the data series that what humor is and why things are funny is because people, you're pointing out out points to people and they laugh about it. Yep. And, you know, in the yep. case of The Simpsons, these, the, the, the writers, you know, the, I mean, it would obviously be really fun to be in the writer's room to see where this stuff is coming from. But I mean, some of it is so spookily accurate. I mean, that, know, it's, that it's life freaking... imitating art or is art imitating life? Right. That 9 11, <laughs> that right. 9 11 cover, yeah, for example, there's just no freaking way. That was just, yeah. Nah. Well, and, and, um, for those wondering, I'll pull it up while John's talking. There's a there's an interesting website called Half Past Time. I don't know if I've talked to you about this or not, Arthur. No. Half Past yeah, no, Time never heard of it. is a a project where they sent they sent out uh ro robots like Google sends out for web um sites, you know, to to basically to download the website and then they put it in the search engine in the search engine only those things that they want in the search engine because google does edit out things mm -hmm. uh, but half past time uh basically covers the internet with these these little snippet code robots and they find what the group think is on the mm. internet on a daily basis interesting and then they create a report i don't know if it is daily but uh, they create a report based off of that information. And so you're, you're looking at the quote unquote group consciousness or the group consideration that's going on. And it's fascinating. Now, the reason why I'm, I'm bringing this up is, is that it was also found that there was a random number generator. Uh, at, it might've been Oxford. It was somewhere in England when nine 11 occurred back in 2001. And when at the moment that the planes hit the twin towers, the random number generator skitzed out and behaved differently than it did normally. Mm. So the reason why I bring this up is, is that you know we're all in the same room. We aren't in one collective consciousness, and we did do a podcast on that, by the way. Uh, it's very interesting to to you have these particular pieces of information where half past human has predicted particular things that people are aware of. And these are just people with reactive minds, just your, your normal, normal earthlings, so to speak and everything. So there's a lot of, and I don't, I don't even really consider it fringe because fringe to me is sort of, well, we were just talking about this for the podcast, you know, at one point in time, electricity was fringe. <laughs> at one point in time, the internet was fringe. At one point in time, the Gutenberg press was fringe. So mm -hmm. it, it's a matter of consideration on what a conspiracy is. And the more information becomes widely available, the more conspiracies there are, because there is a small portion of the population who wants to conspire to control the rest of the population. I think it's pretty obvious by now that that's been happening throughout history. Yeah. Don't you think? Absolutely. But it works. Well, and what were you and, and that's at? what's scary about it. Sorry. Yeah. I, I was just going to say, for those wondering, the picture is of Bart Simpson basically standing next to a book, a uh, cover of a magazine, and it has a $9 sign on it mm -hmm. with two twin towers, with the, the, the twin towers, basically. And then at the top, it says New York. And how it's, how it's positioned, like it's just nine mm -hmm. and one, one, which is... Mm just insane and then there's also the the donald mm -hmm. trump prediction that he was going to be president as well yeah which is way before it ever That's happened. Right. yeah way yeah. Before. was he even running at that point no no. Come on. no i remember the day that i heard that he was going to run for president <laughs> and i was just like oh but they have been chasing him 
even as a younger man, they did keep asking him when he was going to run for president. So it wasn't a real surprise when he finally did. Yeah, well, Matthew McConaughey has political aspirations as well. Mm. You know, and he was on Mm. The View and they tried to take him out on there. You know, just with with the first yeah, question, I've never seen that on oh, TikTok. I hate the view. You know, so uh, and you know, you have to look at things as if, from the viewpoint of is is there is a lot more going on than meets the eye, and part of it is evil, and part of it is just natural progression, and there are those people who are the crossroads for change, uh, Martin Luther King, Gandhi, uh, Malcolm X, uh, Jonas Salk you know you're some, uh, well tesla these types of people and this yep. is where things really really change because of one individual and these individuals provoke the establishment and then you have conspiracies because they might just lose control yeah so that well and you- it's not just conspiracies um like there's there's a whole bunch of other things you know like like let's say i have an issue with homosexuality mm-hmm. then that makes me a homophobe you know mm-hmm. the the argument is Controlling already there the narrative i yeah i have an issue with getting vaxxed you know mm-hmm. oh, i must be one of those conspiracy anti-vaxxers <laughs> i that have an issue most... with that was really frustrating but, but it's all in the same it, thing yeah. yeah big time but it's it's all in it you know um like religion copped a massive massive hit with that as well you know christians that stood up then like it's you know, conspiracy theory, um, homosexuality, you know, um, black versus white, um, all these things, they're, they're all, they're all the same dynamic, but just different categories. So if you want to freely think, um, people have already been given the arguments and what to say to you like robots, um, which kind of goes against you know, Scientology teaching you to become a free being to make your own choices. Um, right. And so therefore, you know, Scientology is a cult. It is full of conspiracy theories. It's <laughs> it's all these things that society doesn't want people to be, basically, or people that control society. Right. Well, it, it, it bucks, bucks the norm and bucks the, the control that they are trying to put in. And I wanted to read this and I've, I've mentioned it before in, in other podcasts, but this is from 1952. Hubbard said this, and this is from the Philadelphia doctorate course uh, lecture. I believe it's lecture 23. Uh, the lecture was ARC cycles, theory and automaticity. He says, we wouldn't have a ghost of a chance right now unless homo sapiens actually had slugged up from the mud to a point where he had a little leisure time. We happen to be going through a period when man's man has made himself relatively free by the use of the machine, just after a period when he was terribly enslaved by the machine. The early days in industrialism and just before the machine is employed for his utter enslavement. The reason you've got Scientology is, to a large degree, right here, there's a little breathing period on Earth. I don't know how many years it is from here to the other, but you've already seen the slavery state start with Hiroshima. It became dangerous for knowledge to be disseminated. It became terribly important to them to shut down all the boundaries on knowledge. You've seen those curtains shutting down. Those are the shades of night falling. The whole whole nonsense of thought police is moving right straight in to the shades mm. of night. We've got a very short time. It isn't the destruction of civilization by the atomic bomb. It's, quote, let's shut down the communication lines of knowledge, unquote. Here, for a brief moment, we have them free and open. There's a tremendous urgency against that. It is real. It is going to happen here on Earth. He said this in 1952. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, that, that pretty and the funny much thing is, puts it the way that it really is to me. Yeah. And the funny thing is, in the period of the 90s as well, there was a whole heap of people, which you can't find now anymore. There was a lot of people talking about the the same thing for telling um you know COVID even and financial change and um even the creation of the new world order that was written probably in Hubbard's time yeah you know so that's that's not 
a new idea. It's a very old idea mm -hmm. that's taking time to put into place. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, you know, you can't write an, a concept that. like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you can't write that up and then make it happen in the next two years. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I think they were somebody's behind. written it. Yeah. 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 They were behind and they needed, they needed um, to get a leg up over the fence. Well, let's lock everybody in and we'll, we'll get everything installed while they're all quote unquote, in fear that's catching, right catching a cold i'm, I'm not trying and the to funny thing is that's not die, conspiracy idea. yeah and the funny thing is that's not conspiracy if you spend the time um researching this you'll find information everywhere on it but unless you ask you'll never know right that's and so if you don't ask you Sorry. know then you're the conspiracy theorist no that's okay yeah. yeah, that that goes back to our yesterday's conversation about look, don't listen. Yeah, he's not just saying don't listen; he's also saying look. Right, because you're not—they're mm -hmm. not necessarily—you're not going to necessarily be told the truth. You're going to have to go look for it, and that's that's the, that's the reason it comes back to why Scientology has become a pariah. I mean, besides, they they, they become a pariah because they they've done things to harm the name on purpose on purpose yes. it isn't it isn't it isn't just, it just happened and miscavige is a fuck up it's being done on purpose yep. because those are the shades of night on knowledge they don't mm -hmm. want people to have this knowledge and they've they've stored it away and put it underground in the new mexico desert for their own keeping while changing the data for other people it's quite literally what has happened mm -hmm. So that brings us back to, and we did, you skipped this one. Do you want to do this one now or do you want to put it somewhere else? Because I noticed you jumped over it. The victim shaming one? No, the time it takes. Time it takes. Oh, I think that was sort of mm. in a way covered in the expensiveness, like the whole bridge takes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, so... it, it takes as long as it takes. And it yeah. takes, a, it, the reason is, is there's a, there's a shallow gradient that needs to be done in order for a person, a being to, get the most out of it and it, you're looking in the neighborhood of about mm, to go clear somewhere in the neighborhood of about 300 hours just mm -hmm. to go clear if you wanted to mm -hmm. do the whole bridge i think you'd be safe to say 600 hours but a lot of that is you auditing solo it yeah. isn't somebody else to you mm -hmm. so i mean you know 600 sure. hours that's 10 what 10 weeks at 40 hours so somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 to 14 weeks 40 hours a week that's not much yeah, you know, in the in the scheme of things, when you consider how much you sleep, for example, mm. yeah. <laughs> and you know, it's an investment towards you. Like, you know, everybody's out there investing in their like money and their homes and their cars and their wives and their kids and everything. That's all fair and well, but how about you invest in you a bit too? Well, you look at that versus mm. the, to be a professional at something, ten thousand hours. That's far less than 10,000 mm -hmm. hours. <laughs> I mean, you know, relatively speaking. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a walk in the park. Yeah. So that that puts that one to bed. So the next one is victim shame. Yeah, which is which was sort of in a way covered with um, the empathy thing, the lack of empathy. Yeah. Well, what do you mean by victim shaming? Well, I mean, like some people might get the perception when, um, okay, so for example, I had this friend. And he, um, he basically was, was in the process of transitioning from male to female. And anyway, he pretty much said that he, he had things happen to him in his life with his mom and stuff. And I, I tried to, to, in, in a, it's very difficult to actually say, because you, you don't want to take that responsibility away from them. But I, I pretty much encouraged him to take a look at the things that he might be responsible for in that situation. Now, I, I understand there's a great, <laughs> you know, there's a great area. You can't just say, no, it was your fault because that's not what I was saying at all. Unfortunately, he took it that way. And I probably, you know, I was very mm. new with Scientology. I probably lacked the tact um in order to bring what i was trying to say across gently uh, m like more gently but um anyway he was very unhappy with me <laughs> obviously because that's a very touchy subject but but things like that it's like um somebody who's had a very traumatic time 
you going ahead and you trying to uh, help them be responsible for it. And unfortunately, it can come across as victim shaming. Mm. One, of, one of the things that I, uh, I think is interesting to point out is, is if Scientology, the subject, independent Scientology, or even to a degree, the church, is, is victim shaming. I would like to point out that it is, in fact, truly the opposite. Hubbard says in 1960 mm. on the State of Man Congress, the only reason that Dianetics works and was so successful is because it approaches therapy from the viewpoint of them, the PC, the, 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 uh, the client being a victim. Anybody, anybody can be a victim. And if you, if you want to do the larger art, it comes down to a degree of responsibility. So he, he said, if mm. I wanted to write another best bestseller, I could just title it, I, I am a victim, you are a victim. And it would mm. sell millions of copies because it's something that people could identify with. And, and, and to even expand that farther out to a larger arc, the entire, entire Scientology bridge, his approach from the viewpoint of victimization. <laughs> because you're you're what has been done to you what's happened to you in and you do all of the lower mm -hmm. scientology bridge you're you're doing that and then you get on new era dianetics and you're approaching it from what engrams happened to you even after you've handled handled over it's and withholds on grade two which is what that addresses and then wait for it wait for it after you go clear now you're handling victimization again from the composite case from OT2 all the mm. way to OT7 and even into Excalibur. LRH never really was allowed to release OT8 by the church for whatever reasons, and that's a whole other podcast. So if victim, 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 victim. So Scientology and Dianetics are victim shaming. It's just a crock of shit. Mm. It is. Well, you know, I, I, I personally have seen where, you know, I've, uh, for example, when I first first reached out um, in one of the Facebook groups while I was still with the uh, the guy that was very much suppressing me at that point in time, mm -hmm. somebody had said in the comments something. I can't remember what it was, but it just rubbed me up the wrong way because at that point in time, you know, you, you, you can't just make people responsible. You've got to get them to be more mm. aware. And in that way, they decide what's responsible for them. Right. Not anybody else. Right. And this guy was, you know, trying to do that um, in a in a very unsubtle way. But thankfully, I actually had other independents, uh, you know, stand up for me and be like, hey, back off. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, you, you know, I mean, when you ask somebody... <laughs> From the again from the State of Man Congress in 1960, Hubbard says, you know, you could you have to ask yourself, what could I be responsible for? Right. But it is a gradient approach. Still, even when you're doing that, the entire grade chart approaches things from victim. What's what's happened, quote unquote, to you? Now, you is 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 a different term than most than our listeners would probably think. Mm. It's a much bigger convoluted mess of of the composite case you know what i'm talking about both of you do mm -hmm. yeah who so, is you who who and what is you and that that mm -hmm. is where the whole i am a victim thing comes from but you can't well just walk up to the man on the street and say what could you be responsible for yeah that's because not because they're work. just going to mm -hmm. be made wrong yeah so yeah. scientology approaches this on a very shallow approach and and what's even worse is that when you do that, and I know. they they actually get resistive. They become even more resistive than than they would have been had they just figured it out themselves. Right, it's because it's undetermined. Yeah, yeah, it's it's force, and what happens with force when when you know the, it, it, there's a resistance to force always. So yeah, so victim yeah. shaming, not really the case if you understand the material. And I go back to. Some of the things that I've seen more so on Reddit than any other places, you just you see people just 
word salading opinions that have absolutely no basis in fact on knowing anything about the subject whatsoever because they're basing their information off of somebody else's incorrect information yeah. i think that's one of the biggest mm -hmm. problems yeah not just with scientology mm -hmm. and dianetics but you know how much help has the internet i mean you, unfortunately the internet gives everybody a platform to be wrong with <laughs> yeah. you know and say stupid stuff and that's that's really unfortunate because other people go and read it and think it's the gospel. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what makes it kind of tricky yeah. is that do, do, do we want all the misinformation out there or do we want the freedom of speech to remain? <laughs> like... And that and therein lies the double edged double edged sword is a being in their their right to freedom of speech. But you know, I almost I almost think at least from a United States viewpoint that the freedom of speech needs to be accompanied with you need to have, and I'm and I'm I'm going to say it even though it's an analogy. You need to have two brain cells to rub together before you say something. Mm. But that's that's, that's the, where the problem comes in. But if you look at like so many people in society, like the majority of them, it's just they're not there. This is why you can't have, and I hate using the word, but I, I'm just going to use it. You can't have woke conversations with other people because <laughs> their work and your work is two different things. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, Arthur, I, I know you want to say something. I, I can see it brewing. <laughs> <laughs> well, the whole, the whole victim thing is very much taught. You know, we see it everywhere we go. Um, you know, as I love Netflix, I love my entertainment, um, but I've got to be careful at times too, because, you know, we're being taught how to be victims, you know, consider, um, oh, what's that show? Oh my God. Why can't I think of it now? Full mental blank. Um, Keanu Reeves, where he goes around just shooting people, um, uh, John the recent Wick. films he did, John Wick. So if you consider something like John Wick, right. He's, he's the victim in the film, right? And the only way he can correct his victimness is by killing all the people that made him a victim, mm -hmm. right? And so just that message right there, people take on board. And then you get something like Scientology that, and you're right, I haven't seen any aspect of victimness in it because it's teaching you how to confront your victimness. Um, you know, people would be afraid of that because all they know how to do <laughs> to become the winner from a victim is to defeat their enemies. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and like, there's so much of that, you know, I'm watching the series band of brothers, which I really enjoy. It's an old series, a war, a war show, you know, mm -hmm. but the U S are the good guys and the Nazis are the bad guys. Yeah. You know, victims again, <laughs> and it's like this whole victim thing is put in pretty much everything we watch um, mm -hmm. to some degree um, at a really subconscious level and at a really deep level. Um, so for anybody to, to confront something, it's scary because it might mean war. It might mean I need to stand up for myself and bash someone or kill someone. It might mean I have to do this or I have to I have to make this massive effort so I'm no longer a victim. So I reckon subconsciously people are really happy being the victim. Mm -hmm. And they're really happy being afraid. And they're really happy just sitting in their bubble because it's safe. Mm -hmm. It's comfortable. And that's the trap right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you look like you're bubbling with something to say. Yeah, like uh, my example, every morning before I get out of bed, I go on Reddit and I read some stories and stuff. And <laughs> I like I like the am I the asshole ones. But um, so <laughs> a, a lot of those, well, all of them are, are technically asking if they are. And am I wrong? Some, am, am I wrong? wrong? Right? Yes. Am, that. I, am I gaslighting myself? Is uh, somebody else gaslighting me? Right. And yep. there's so many, m most of this, just like in music and a lot of movies or whatever, it's just second dynamic related. So, um, you know, the, the wife or the husband or the girlfriend or the boyfriend will, will ask, Hey, listen, am I the asshole if... Or, or, or they'll be like, yeah. was, was I, um, uh, how, how can I do X with, with my boyfriend or, or whatever, or my girlfriend. And they come from the place of, 
I have no choice. Please help me. Whereas <laughs> literally one for one in every post, I could probably comment, exercise your boundaries. Mm -hmm. You are both yeah. in a yeah. relationship. There's two of you. You have choices. He has Is, choices. Are you being a doormat? If are this person, yeah. If yeah. this person doesn't respect your boundaries, leave. That's yeah. it's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. Well, and this yeah, is, but this what if what if this happens? What if that happens? Oh, what if it hurts? <laughs> Fuck's sake, <laughs> it's hurting now. That's why you're on Reddit. <laughs> right, right, yeah, right. but it's gonna hurt more. <laughs> <laughs> well, and this this goes out to a, a, a wider perspective of, well, we're talking about stories, okay? So stories have to have an antagonist and a protagonist, right? Otherwise, by yeah. by Earth standards, yeah. you've and got a victim, no, and a victim, and, and a victim, you've yeah. got no story. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so stick with me here because I, I think this is really funny. <laughs> If 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 everybody took responsibility, okay, and, and let's say we're looking at a, at a global scale, why did why do two places go to war? Okay, whatever the reason is, we could look at, at, at current things. It's either religious beliefs, Israel and Iran, or uh, Russia and Ukraine. It's a real a, a war over real estate more than anything. This type of thing. Well, the 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 thing is is it's there's a maturity that goes along with being a, a a person a society a country a planet and all of this and then you go back to a movie like um the day the earth stood still this came out in what 52 53 something like that and here you have uh the planet earth now has nuclear capability and the the global uh, society has taken notice and they sent some some uh, emissaries to come down and say, if you guys don't knock this shit off, this big robot here has the authority to turn your planet into a burned out cinder. This is literally what they say in the movie. <laughs> literally. And they made a remake of it with, strangely enough, Keanu Reeves a few years ago. It wasn't as good. Mm. Had a lot of great effects and stuff like that in it. And, but and it was real tracky too, the way they did it as far as the whole track. But the, the point is, <laughs> the point is, is that it, uh, you're trying to get people to be ethical with one another. If you get people to be ethical, do you ever have a story again? Is there ever a victim? That's what I'm, I'm trying to get to. How, how can you have a victim if you have people beha behaving maturely and what is maturity? Well, is maturity yeah, yeah. It, it, it is the 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 construct of the concept of maturity, granting another person beingness and and allowing their viewpoint and looking at it and being diplomatic and working out your differences instead of blowing them off of the fucking map. I mean, even even in in the, that movie example in 1952, if you guys don't straighten up, we're going to remove you from the chessboard. Well, unfortunately, mm. this 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 place, Earth, the universe, or whatever, is built with freedoms, barriers, and purposes. And unfortunately, the the the, the saddest thing is that beings become the barrier, and that's why we have wars, and that's why we have people fighting each other and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Instead of just, I mean. It's it's just insane that we can do that to one another when you really think about it. Mm -hmm. When you really consider it that it doesn't matter how bad a person has been, they're just like you. Mm -hmm. It's just their experiences have altered them. Right. Albert even says No, they're me. not, because they hurt me. They got in my way. They <laughs> cut me off in traffic. <laughs> they stood in the line in front of me before I got my Be shopping. Responsible, Arthur. Come on, Lisa. Come right. on. Right. Right. <laughs> Right. <laughs> you know, Hubbard says ultimately in the end, there is no one to blame. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's the, the point of Dianetics and Scientology is, is what could you, you be responsible for? I mean, you know, even with everything I've done case wise and everything, I smack my head, you know, it's almost like walking through a door where you're too tall and you hit your head on the top of the door. I smack my head all, all the time on the concept of fuck. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> you know i mean it's 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 
I'll give you I'll give you an example. I had one of those Galilean thermometers in the closet. I had it on my desk for several months and it, they're really neat looking and everything. And I put it in the closet. We've got nine cats. I put it in the closet because I, I knew it's just a matter of time before one of those cats in the middle of the night knocks that thing over. Guess what happened? I put it in the closet. Cat knocked it over. In the closet. In the closet and broke it on another cat. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I can't make that up. It He's fine, by the way. And, and we're all, quick, run, get him in the bathtub. We got to wash it that off. It can fun. kill him and all this stuff. And then and, and, and the, the nephew says, yeah, it's okay. It's just got water and it's got ethanol in it. And he says, he'll be, he'll be fine. It's only if they ingest it. And I'm like, it's got what? Yeah. And yeah, ethanol is poisonous to cats. Right. <laughs> so we're like trying to wash it off. <laughs> we can get it off of him. Mm -hmm. He's drunk practically walking around the house because of the ethanol on the cat. And I'm feeling shit awful because I'm the one that put it in the closet. And here's the here's the thing. This is the liability of, of being an OT. It wasn't 36 hours later that I had, and you can call it a premonition or whatever you want. So this is prior to, yeah. Prior to, 36 to 48 hours before, I was like, I better do something with that thermometer in the closet before one of the cats breaks it. It's not going to be safe. Yeah, yeah. There is shit 48 <laughs> hours later, the cat broke it on another cat. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. That's That's the liability of it. And I looked at it and I was like, okay, I disregarded my knowingness over at number one. And two, he's fine. He He's not sick or anything. He still smells a little bit, but we got him washed off and it stunk up the towels and everything, but he's fine. Jazzy is fine. But at your own personal liability, who, who was there and communicating? I was. I ignored mm. a 48-hour email in the Theta universe to myself about... Because I couldn't, it was that confirmation bias. Right. Why am I thinking about this? Yeah. Don't question why you're thinking about it. Just realize this is this is something that's going to happen if you don't do something about it. I, that's the only way I can approach it. But even prior to that, there was the putting it in, and I'm sorry to evaluate for you, oh, but fine. there was, there was, you took it and put it in the cupboard. That's right. I was the one that put it in the cupboard. And I told <laughs> you, I said, this is my doing. This is my fault. I don't blame the cats for it. The cats don't understand what a Galilean thermometer is. Right. They don't know what's in it. I don't even know how, how how Lucy knocked it over, but she knocked it over and he happened to be at the bottom of the closet when it happened. But you know what? It wasn't only your fault. It was it was it was three people's. And 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 here's why. So you were on, I think you were in session with somebody at that, I was, at that point. I was I was literally in session with somebody. <laughs> Crash, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and just prior to that, about 10 minutes before that, 10, 15 minutes, the nephew came in and he said, uh, he, I don't know, he told me something. And then before he left, I said, please don't forget to take the cats out because he had let them accidentally in. Yeah. They walked past him. Right. And so that was on him. And then on me, after he took them out, I noticed there were still two in here because mm -hmm. obviously we have nine. So it's they, they're kind of easy to overlook. Yeah. And I thought to myself, because I wasn't, I was watching series or something on my iPad or whatever. And I thought to myself, like, you know what? I probably need to take the cat out, but I kind of just left it. Mm -hmm. And and you, you, this is the first time that I'm telling you this, but yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, it was, it was in part my fault too. <laughs> well, but see, ultimately, if you could, if, if you could get people to do that on their own and go, well, you know, back in 19 so and so and so when we took that land back from Russia and we created the Ukraine and Russia says, well, you know, that's a fair point. I get that. And and, and you know, whatever the deal is, I'm not saying I'm pro Ukraine and, and or pro Russia. I'm just saying if if you can have rational people and you can sit down and you can mediate something. That is not victimization. Nobody's being a victim because everybody's saying, well, we played a part. We in played it. a part in it, and that's the thing that is missing yeah. from this planet, mm -hmm. and is it's been made okay to be a victim, and that, yeah, I mean, you know, I get it. You know, a woman is raped, something like that. She's the victim. How can you blame the woman who who was raped? I get yeah, it. Yeah, that is a difficult. I get it. You don't want to touch that. I get it. 
This this podcast will get taken down just like that. Just just like but that. You know what? How about Ooh. I address that as a woman? Yeah, why don't you go ahead and address that? I I won't touch that one with a ten foot pole. <laughs> so this this is obviously something that's that's very um difficult and and I I come from a background where I have had um family members it, it it has happened to family members of my own friends as well and um myself a little tidbit that i'm not sure people know but i was molested as a child as well so it obviously is a a, a very difficult and touchy thing to talk about however there is responsibility at play in that mm -hmm. and it's not for anybody else to decide, but the individual themselves. I will never, yeah. ever tell a victim of those situations you that could. they need to be responsible. You, you, you couldn't. That is the most asinine, idiotic, yeah. selfish, That's the wrong way to go about it. Yeah. However, I, I feel like with my own situation, once I could identify the roles that I played at that point in time, and it wasn't it it wasn't coming from a place of guilt or um shaming myself because of those things you you cannot do it from that way from that angle mm -hmm. however you 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 do it by taking ownership of the issue mm -hmm. by saying okay these are the roles that i played this is probably what i could have done differently um and guess what it completely it almost eradicates the issue that 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 it happened entirely because your control in that point in time was taken away what you're doing now it yes and and those everything that happened during that time because it was traumatic was unconscious so what you're doing in present time if you can get yourself to acknowledge the roles that you played back then is you're saying okay i'm fully 100 percent consciously making a decision in the present moment to acknowledge those things mm -hmm. and and in that way it ceases to persist but for as long as anybody stays a victim is as long as they are doing themselves a disservice by choosing to 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 stay in that because you're not living life when you do that mm -hmm. you're, you're saying they mm -hmm. are the master of my own peace mm -hmm. and that is an incredibly isolating way to live it's it's a prison it's it, it really is a self-created prison to have somebody else your prison garden yeah like like that that person is uh like i need i need them to resolve my issues for me ready um and you want to add i'm not going to add anything to the rape side I, I mean there's plenty i could share on that from an abundance of people I've worked with, um, both men and women that have been in that position. Mm -hmm. um, but, but the victim aspect, it keeps you trapped in a point of time. Um, so there's, I, I can observe a lot of people and just by their posture, I can kind of see where they've stopped their progress because they've become a victim of something. So, so sometimes you can see, you know, grown adults, but they still have the posture of a six-year-old. They, they still have the posture of an upright student um, in school that's being punished or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but even though, you know, to the eyes, they're, you know, in their forties, in their fifties and working, um, the position of their feet or their posture will show you know, an element, a, a moment in time where they've stopped progressing and, and they're just trapped there. And, and it actually shows through physically in the body. Um, and then what's funny is when you discover that and you remove that victimness, their posture will automatically change mm -hmm. to, to current time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, like, like literally before session and then as they're walking out, completely different they're they're now on the current time track you know they're no longer stopped you know like their time track may be up to say 50 years but you know their mental time track stopped at six years old mm -hmm. when they were punished for you know i don't know stealing 
something from the shops and they were punished for it or you know they did something and their parents smacked them with a stick or a belt or something um yeah it's 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 really interesting and like yeah i i think the victim aspect is it's all taught and we're all being taught how to be victims <laughs> in every aspect of life mm-hmm. you know it makes from it easier to pharmaceuticals mm-hmm. sexuality um, labels identity mm-hmm. labels um you know even around sexual assaults as well um you know because let's be honest some people do put themselves in that situation willingly you know oh it's the easy way out yeah (laughs) that's right because and and you're right it is um it is and like the law and today's society allow it actually rewards victims yeah which, which is really interesting you know like you can actually be rewarded for being the victim you know, I'm going to sue you if you hurt me, you know, even though I'm, I'm attacking you verbally and I'm, I'm, um, prodding you and pushing you, um, beyond your own boundaries. If you touch me, you know, I'm now the victim, you know, while I'm being the perpetrator, right. If I, (laughs) you know what I mean? Enough in the right, in the right, right way or the right sequence, I can I can get paid yeah. to do so. I mean, at at the risk of yeah. sounding racist, I just I just want to highlight a uh, thing here in South Africa, um, which is BEE Black Economic Empowerment. And now it's I mean I don't I don't one hundred percent disagree with it, because you know I do I do believe obviously there should be empowerment. However, I feel like we we are stuck in a place where people are not being educated in, yeah. in the sense that well they can buy votes with a with a with a uh, three-piece chicken box from kentucky fried chicken that's it, what they that's what they literally do yeah unfortunately that is the case so they get rewarded yeah yeah, yeah. you get you get to get some free kfc yeah. if you vote for me yeah i mean yes they well even been... here when they were doing sorry go sorry ahead. even here when they were doing the vaccinations they were giving away cases of beer they were I giving mean, away wow. gift vouchers <laughs> if you got vaccinated. Um, you know, if you're a certain age, they'd they'd give you a voucher if if you'd vaccinate. Oh, yeah, it's they insane. Gave us, they 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 uh, they allowed people to collect. I think it was like three or four hundred rand. Yeah, which is like <laughs> sell your soul. Yeah. So yeah, you know, I mean, it 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 is just everywhere. Like <laughs> so. Arrogance. Arrogance. <laughs> <laughs> this this kind of falls in line with victim shaming it in does. a way. I thought, you know, that's it's it's a nice segue. <laughs> yeah. It does. Because I think I think well, and and there has even be, been times with me that I have been arrogant because, well, guess what? I didn't know all that much about Scientology and I thought I did. So Artie. I'm just gonna look up this word arrogance. So we can all be on the same page. Because um, it's a funny word. Okay. The quality of being unpleasantly proud and behaving as if you are more important than or know more than other people. <laughs> he has a self-confidence that is sometimes seen as arrogance. Uh-huh. It's difficult because so, there's so, the line drawn between arrogance and confidence that's right. and certainty, you know? And that's the thing. As a Scientologist, right. our certainty goes higher mm-hmm. than people that have known us when maybe we weren't that certain. They can, you know, push us around and stuff like that. Start seeing us being, you know, bettering ourselves and they can't handle that. And therefore, you know, but I will say I have actually seen Scientologists who are just fucking arrogant. Yes. Yeah. And, and that's, that, that's the antithesis of granting beingness. Yeah. Is is it's it's I mean, you know, you don't have to quote unquote be humble, but yeah, I mean I can only speak for myself, but at any time that I was full of hubris and arrogant, I ultimately handed myself my ass <laughs> <laughs> in short order and 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 uh 
Why is it like that, eh? Uh, you know, uh, it's a, it's an interesting and thing. There's always <laughs> it's this a, niggling it's a phenomenon. feeling. There's this niggling feeling like, hey, don't get ahead of yourself now. Right. It's... <laughs> right. And, and, you know, I think that that comes down to applying the wrong condition. Mm. You know, ethics condition mm. type of a thing. Because the Thetan knows. Yeah, the, the Thetan knows and you will put your and own ethics does. in. Yeah. And that's, you know, arrogance um, is, is, is something nobody really wants to suffer when they're receiving it. And maybe that's where um, the auditor's code really comes into play as well. Um, because your your validation or invalidation could be, could come across as arrogant, even if it's the truth. And to somebody who can't understand the truth um, or, or understand their own reality and somebody points it out to them, um, you know, you could be so offended by the truth and therefore call somebody arrogant in their approach. Mm -hmm. Well, and th I think it's, it has um, to do with maturity too. I mean, I, I've known Scientologists, yeah. my, my own family, where, you know, they would evaluate the living daylights out of you and they would use, use something out of science or survival and say, well, it's not evaluation if it's true. Okay, I get that. But cause, you know the two rules to happy living: be able to to well cause only those effects others can easily have, and be able to be willing to experience anything. Are you really doing that when you tell somebody? Well, it's not evaluation if it's true, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, I've caught myself for being arrogant, learning that some of the tech. So when I did the life's ups and downs, um, and learned about suppressive people, um, I became arrogant with that concept until you know the whole concept actually lay rest in me mm -hmm. then i realized oh hang on I've, i completely misunderstood it and i took a very arrogant approach towards it mm. yeah so i can and... kind of see how how the tech can bring out an arrogance in someone mm -hmm. um, unintentionally um but then yeah i mean as life does it'll kick you in the face and then yeah. you'll realize oh hang on it, it <laughs> that's might, not what what it meant <laughs> it might even be a little bit of cognitive dissonance because you know you, you you get all these things in scientology that say don't evaluate grand people being this um and of course things others can easily experience right but then you have things that might align with your own uh uh goals in life or whatever which is ultimately to be right um mm. And, and 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 using Scientology sort of to make others wrong, but I guess almost not really intelligent, uh, not really uh, like consciously. It's more it's more just a case of well, if I tell them to do this, then they do it, and then that makes me right. But at the same time, everybody mm. wins, right? Well, and that was <laughs> that that was what I was going to mention yeah. next was is is if you if you wanted to have a, a hypothetical, let's say. You had the ability to give a person a new life and that they could be successful in every walk of life financially and everything. And, and you were doing better than them. And you had a choice of where you could do this for everybody on the planet. Would you do it? Well, at the same time, you can't you can't really do it. It's it's literally honestly, it's literally impossible to help somebody that's who doesn't a, want to be a helped. Netflix series right there. That's yeah. right. That's right. That's right. And I think it's a fine line between forcing your help onto somebody versus somebody genuinely asking for help. Yeah. And and I think that's where the arrogance comes in. Um, because like when you when you learn some of these tools, you want to help as many people as you can. Yeah. And through excitement, you might offer it but it will come across as arrogant. Well, and you know, your, your, your intention is, is really good. It's not right. a bad intention, but to somebody that's far from ready from making a choice of helping themselves, then sure. It can come across as very arrogant. Yeah. And unfortunately, because of the way we're just built, it goes from being curious about helping people to desiring it to enforced, yes. you know, yeah, I think and yes. you go down scale instead of going up, which is understand and know. Yeah. And yeah. LRH LR says, he says, the greatest liability an auditor has is the onus, the responsibility of when you when you help somebody, you're going to run into the phenomena of them thinking that you are better than them. 
Mm. And they're going to resent you for it. So if you, if you, and that's very true. Yeah. If you went out and you ratified everybody being on the same playing field as you and having the same abilities, I think that that's where you see that with Scientologists the most is I have the keys to life. I understand these things and I'm going to educate you and I'm going to do something for you and you must bow down before me. Yeah. Yeah, That's where it comes down. And I, you know, fuck off yeah (laughs) you know you don't you that is the last way that you want to do that educate them give them the data let them think with themselves and walk away right no and that doesn't mean that you shouldn't care for them but what they do with it is is up to them that is pandeterminism and i think that that's where what arrogance doesn't and isn't is is not Mm. pandetermined it's self-determined wouldn't you i mean you're you're big on the determinism mm-hmm. yeah isn't it isn't that is it am i seeing it correctly yeah yeah I, I would say so um you give somebody their self-determinism for the first time what do they do they set the world on fire you know yeah. and they're like i'm gonna be me yeah. i'm gonna be me yeah. i'm gonna be me and yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Pay any yeah, attention yeah. to anybody else yeah and then you go wait yeah. There's another form of I think everybody really? wants to be self-determined until until they get to a point where their self-determinism has screwed something as somebody right. over. They, they handed they themselves their victim. own ass. Yeah, they become the victim. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny? And and this is yep. th- this yep. this falls in line with the overt motivator sequence uh-huh. as well. Uh-huh. Because you know, I th- I think every si- well, not think, I know every single time you have a justification, you become a victim. Right. Right, you make yeah. yourself a victim. Yeah, that's that's what holds the whole thing in place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You don't get those justifications <laughs> off for the justification bulletin where he talks about this. You don't move forward, like our, excuse me, like Arthur Arthur was saying. Yeah. So that leads us to it Scientology Dianetics being bad, really bad, because of it can be suppressive or black Dianetics. Yeah. which falls i mean that's a great segue from arrogance to this yeah because you see the yeah. current state of the church where it's at and what what they're doing with it and hubbard predicted this as well in another lecture mm-hmm. from that same period that the shades of night came from he says it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when these guys get a hold of this data and they start using it against us yeah I mean, the nature of this universe, um, and I think we've mentioned it in a previous podcast, is that it is it is uh, polarized, dualistic. Mm-hmm. So whatever you can use to help somebody with, you can also use it against them. For example, if you Definitely. know that people survive by feeding them nutrition, you can make people not survive by feeding them junk. Right. Stuff like that. Right. If you yeah. can destimulate yeah. a person, you can re-stimulate a person. Yeah. That is where MK Ultra came from, which is part of the What Happened to Scientology series podcast. Yeah. They figured out, wow, yeah. we can use this against people. Yeah. And get them to do what we want. Yeah. And then, you know, if 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 beings are get better through self-determinism, then that means they get worse through other determinism. Mm-hmm. So if somebody is mm-hmm. constantly if if you look at it. This goes sort of in line with the victim shaming thing. If somebody is telling you, you need to be responsible for this and this and this and that, and they're putting force on you, that being is going to be resistive to that. Therefore, they're going to be resistive to the things that would help them solve the thing. They would be resistive Mm. to responsibility. Right. And that falls into Machiavellian theory, which is what they use on on everybody on the planet minute by minute divide and conquer Mm -hmm. yeah you know the machiavellian theory basically starts from the the italian prince who was like well he knew that if if he didn't keep them busy the game would become take him so what he did is he got the two villages Mm -hmm. to fight against each other and sold them arms to fight each other in the meantime he just sat back and watched Hmm. yeah sure (laughs) so that's where you get blacks versus whites asians versus whites you know Palestine versus Israel, Israel and, and Iran, Iran versus Palestine, and all this. So, and that's the game that they play. Well, the same. This is whether you want to want to admit it or not. This is all part of Scientology and Dianetic theory. But even you know, on on a smaller scale, like just from person to person, like if if somebody 
if somebody out there has uh, an agenda and, and just some random person with somebody else, you know, I mean, for example, narcissists, they stumble upon Scientology. They see all this stuff. Mm -hmm. They could use it to their advantage. They, they, that, well, the, and that's exactly what we're talking about. That's exactly what we're talking about is they flip the script and they, they just do the opposite. Yeah. Because, I mean, if, if, you, if you were a suppressive and you looked at the third party law, you would go, this is gold. That's right. what oh. Machiavellian theory is, is for any argument to exist, there has to be an unseen third party. That's what Machiavellian theory is. And this is how you get, and they use the media as the third party to divide groups and keep them fighting because as long as they're fighting you can control the narrative yeah that's black dianetics now i'm not saying that hubbard invented this machiavellian mm -hmm. theory came long before this but hubbard spotted it and said check this shit out this is how this mm -hmm. whole thing happens and it, it it's only suppressive it, it, i mean it just like he says it's not the technology it's the personalities involved that's right that's sure. it. Yeah. Where are they at on the tone scale and what are their purposes and goals? So it, it doesn't doesn't make the subject suppressive. It it it's the person using the subject. Yeah. I, I mean, where have you heard mm -hmm. ever govern any go governing body or uh legal place or whatever give a statement like the one Aaron Hubbard gave where the only way to control people is to lie to them? He outright <laughs> said that. That's the and, last and people, thing you want to say. Pe people are obviously using it against him. He's like, you see, you see, but that's obviously bullshit because it was taken out of context. But <laughs> the 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 point really is, is that he was that. Um... Well, you see it from. <laughs> Yeah, well, go ahead. I no, no, you're off. fine. You're fine. I, you you see this all the time. I was talking with with uh, Jacob, one of our our PCs. Hi, Jacob. I know you're listening. I was talking with Jacob yesterday, and 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 he was talking about the the. Uh, <laughs> we were just doing word clearing, and it came up. We weren't in session, so this isn't private data. <laughs> and I think you'll get a kick out of this. I was talking about Kamala Harris and what she was promising people in order to get votes, much like they do here with KFC and <laughs> mm. and all that stuff. I'll give you twenty five thousand dollars so you can get a house, and you know we'll print more money, and everything will be fine. Just you just lie to them, lie to them, lie to them, lie to them. That's what politicians do. And, and they see what sticks and then they go after that and they keep lying to them in order to get what they want. Yeah. That's, I mean, and, and, and that's what Dianex in Scientology is, is he's just pointing these things out. How you use it is up to you. Right. Yeah, exactly. And that's... In, um, in Hitler's book in Mein Kampf or Mein Kampf, however you pronounce it, um, in one of the chapters, he has a chapter on propaganda and mm -hmm. he says just that as well. He says, you know, if you want to control a society, you lie Repeat to them it. through yeah. the newspapers, through the media. Um, and even he was saying that's such a common tactic politicians use to control their people is by outright lying to them. And that was what in the 40s. Mm -hmm. um, but going back to what you were saying earlier as, as well around Ron Hubbard um, predicting this happening. Um, and correct me on this, but there was a story that um, Captain Bill Robertson and Ron Hubbard, there's, there's a theory that Ron Hubbard asked Captain Bill Robertson to start an independent movement to keep the technology going, mm -hmm. um, the original technology going, because he's the one that sort of started the independent movement mm. Yeah, back in, in, a, in a large scale. 80. Yeah. Yeah, and that happened while before Ron Hubbard died, mm -hmm. um, not far before, like not far yeah, from well, he was before his, him dying. His, I don't know his fruits of ob observation. Uh, strangely enough, as an OT, were were cut off because well, he was very, he was very much a potential trouble source to the people that that surrounded him, and he was in the country illegally, yeah. and didn't have the communication lines, and was left to resort to the communication lines of two people and those two people wait for it lied to it constantly about mm. what was actually going on and they filtered out the data that he could get because he was in oh hiding. who would that be well this is miss miss cabbage was part of it but it was the the husband <laughs> and wife couple that that took care of him i forget what their names are it's 
immaterial, but these two individuals were responsible for lying to him hmm. to control the narrative of what was going yeah. on. And, and Bill Robertson saw this and, and experienced it. He talks about it in lectures uh, of which hmm. I've read the, the transcripts for. I haven't heard the audio, but I've read the, the, the transcripts and he saw this and was like, well, yep. <laughs> Game's over. Yeah, we've been infiltrated and all of this stuff. And it's a really interesting viewpoint to to hear these lectures mm. and everything like that. I'm very much more of a uh, I'll take in the big picture type of a thing, and I try not to take one particular viewpoint. But he has a lot of really good points. That particular person, Bill Robertson, uh, so does LRH, yeah. and you know there were um, uh, David Mayo too. He's got videos on YouTube. That's right. About this stuff. Yeah. So you can get, build a pretty accurate picture of what was going on and what happened to, to the organization and how it imploded and was taken over. But I guarantee you that the subject itself was used to take it over. Yeah. yeah. In reverse. And it still is currently in, um, from what I've seen anyway, from my own personal experiences, like the black Dianetics aspect, it is a legitimate thing. It's it not is. a theory. Um, I've seen it play out. I've seen, I've seen where the subject can set you up. Um, and it's interesting how you've got how the next topic stems from this. <laughs> Lisa the did a good job. She like they're did a so. Scale. <laughs> What's that? Look, of what? The, the, the next, the next yeah. two. <laughs> yeah, going from black dianetics to disconnection to fair game. Like those three are really linked in and tied in they um are. they are yeah so how do we get to disconnection um, from black dianetics somebody want to explain that one to our listening i think also I, might have I a, good, it. a good a uh... good all right sure yeah so so if let's say there's so many concepts um that work off a gradient and technically they should be in some kind of order so there's a clear understanding and a broader picture of the subject where one can make their own determinism mm -hmm. unfortunately it doesn't quite work that way in certain facilities some of these facilities you'll go in and they'll get you doing courses that are not in order and so they'll jump around and say for example you know they'll, they'll, they'll get you on a course before teaching you how to communicate and before teaching you how to study and they'll get you on a course that's way out of gradient for you and you know you'll get a win but then you'll also get a defeat at the same time so then they'll put you onto something else and then they'll put you onto something else and then they'll put you on say you know the life's ups and downs course without teaching you withholds um, without teaching you about the arc without teaching you about so many other really important aspects. And then, so they put you on the life's ups and downs course. And the next thing you know, your mother's a suppressive to you. Oh, your husband's a suppressive to you. Oh, your neighbors are suppressive to you. Right. But we're not suppressive to you. You need us. Well, mm -hmm. you need us. That's right. We're your new family in a sense. Now, now and then, so the, then they the... make you go ahead. I interrupted. Yep. And so now they've helped you declare. <laughs> these suppressive people in your life right and this is this is what's interesting because the original life's ups and downs course versus the later model life's ups and downs course <laughs> the <laughs> the techniques and the ways to deal with a suppressive person some of those are conveniently missing and disconnection is a great one it's the easiest one so what do you do you disconnect from your loved ones because you're now you know, a staff member to a greater organization with the greater purpose. And these people are going to stop you from doing that. So then you start disconnecting from, from these people. And then you fall into PTSness and you think it's because of these people you've disconnected from and, and it's supported, which is really insane. And it's supported and you can't work out why you're PTS. So then they might put you on the communication course and then they might get you onto the study course. And then they might get you onto another course. 
Mm -hmm. just get you deeper, deeper in the, into the hole. And then next thing you know, the only way out is to do more courses. But the more courses you do, the deeper you get, then you become more obligated. And then your family is so disconnected from you. Who do you turn to? Who else do you have left? Yeah. And, and, it, and it, then you, it, then you have Stockholm syndrome. It's kind you know, of you a love perfect your circle. Enemy. It's kind of a perfect circle because it's, if, it's pretty if, clever. If, if you're PTS, that makes you a victim. Scientology addresses victimness. You know, it's sort of, it sort of kind of keeps you in yeah. there. It, 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 it's a snake eating its own tail yeah. kind of a thing, but it, it's interesting to point yeah. out how you, how you can, um, Take this apart. Hubbard says only two and a half percent of the society are truly suppressive. The other 17 and a half percent are potential. <laughs> so if, if, if your mom, your dad, your brothers, your sisters, your aunts, your uncles, your grandparents, and your close friends are all suppressives. You're the problem. <laughs> you're the problem. <laughs> right. Am I the yes. drama? Yes. But the thing is, is, yes. is that's not two and a half percent. That's 78, 80% of the people that you know. That's right. The other 20% is right. the church. Because, Strangely enough, it's 20%. <laughs> because they won't teach you about withholds and overts um, at this point. Being critical. Right. So you're going that. into this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're going into this so blind without data that can help you spot this and then when you do spot it and then you question it well you know off to ethics. the ethics officer with you <laughs> right right it's not it's not us it's you yeah exactly exactly we we as independent scientologists try to keep that in mind as we go along with beings well i think the first thing people should know is that we don't force anybody to disconnect so there's yeah, that. I would, uh, will put it on the table and say, you know, you've only got a couple of options here. Yeah. But it's your choice to 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 pick those options. But the 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 unfortunate factor is is that this has been going on so long in the corporate church of Scientology that people are a bloody mess from being put yeah. through that machine. Mm -hmm. And they don't trust yeah. ethics at all. I'll tell you that the the things that are missing so much in the independent field is 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 the ability, willingness, and knowingness and understandingness to handle ethics situations, uh, confessional procedure, handling overts and withholds, OW write-ups go along with that. These are things that are dropped out because there are things that people don't want to do, don't want to look at. These are the things that are missing in the independent field. And I've seen it time and time and time again. That this is the these are the areas where the data is a little gray and, and they're hard to find and yeah. nobody wants their, 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 their dirty little secret because uh, similar overts of their own. And it's just natural because people have reactive minds. But the fact of the matter is, is that the only way, the only way you will go OT is by handling your own personal responsibility on things. And ethics is a personal thing, but still, if it's a personal thing, there are things you got to be responsible for. Mm. On the, on all your dynamics. You mean I can't be the victim anymore? You no, you mm -hmm. can't. You can't. You can't no. be the victim anymore. Uh, not with us I don't anyway. know if I like this not, not with us. We're not going to your shove local it. psychiatric <laughs> yeah. facility and yeah, we're not going to shove it down your throat. But uh, you know, you you will be expected to to uh, take a look. I mean, that's that's what Scientology you and genetics is about. Take a look. If you, you mean you're not going to look... diagnose me? <laughs> no. If you have to look <laughs> at, 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 some, at it objectively and, and take yeah. out the emotions of it, it would make sense. Like if you have like a, um, let's say a Petri dish and, and you, 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 you want to prevent things from being spoiled in there. Like you're trying to do an experiment. You're not going to contaminate it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like they feel like, uh, people who are PTS, if they don't disconnect from them, well, they they're gonna risk contamination. So I I, mm. I can I can understand mm. it from that, but that isn't that isn't you you can't deal with beings that way. Yeah. Well, there's a it's handle or disconnect, and there are a lot of things you can do to handle. Yeah. Disconnection is the in 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 case of emergency, break glass type of a thing, and that's something that the person has to decide on themselves and even then in a lot of cases 
when somebody decides to disconnect, they, they had other options. It's very difficult, mm. Scientology, because well, the, the, the church's organization, mm -hmm. because you, you have a, a place where people need people very often to want to change mm -hmm. in the first place. So, so the group setting kind of has to be there mm -hmm. or, or, you know, I mean, yeah, you have to have the support of a third dynamic. I mean, that's that there is a, a, an incredible value mm. to a group. Even people who meditate, for example, they do much better and meditate more regularly in a group setting than they would, you know, just in their home. Yeah. Kind of thing. I was talking, uh, I was explaining to Arthur this morning, how I've got a, an assistant because of the ADHD thing. Mm -hmm. You know, because I, mm. I, I lack focus and I could probably use objectives, but we're not going there right now. But the point <laughs> is. <laughs> is my lip bleeding? <laughs> <laughs> I don't see anything. Don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but the point is that um, mm. when when you do introduce a group factor, then you've got the group reactive mind. And then you have people who agree with other people to make other people wrong. And then the, the, the group insanity gets, gets involved in stuff. Like I've always thought to myself, like, Hey, you know, Scientology would be awesome if there wasn't this thing that, that there was like an ethics officer and a, this person and a, that person, if it was just like a, an individual basis. Yeah. I just don't want them to, to make me confront anything. I don't want to confront. But, but then again, yeah. <laughs> but then again, the group setting is important. So it's it's it, sort it, of like a fine is, line. It is a double-edged sword and it takes tact and it takes uh, granting of beingness. And it, it is an art to get somebody up the bridge. Let me tell you, it is an art. It is not just a science. And you have to know people. And it, there is no pattern that you have to deal with because there are so many idiosyncrasies and eccentricities in people's beingnesses yeah. uh, or personalities, however you want to put it, valences as well. But if, and like he says in Keeping Scientology Working, number one, if you hit home, if you, you, you understand where that person is coming from, there is a datum with every single person that resonates so clearly and so deeply with the person mm -hmm. If you get that across to them and you figure out what it is, they will go OT or they won't. Mm. But mm. responsibility is, he defines it in two ways. Responsibility is doing something. or Sometimes it is doing nothing at all. Mm. And, mm -hmm. and that is one of the things that I, I, I wrestle with because I want to help people so much. And mm. I, I think we're all three of us are the same way. Yeah. And it's sometimes it's yeah. hard to sit there and watch a train wreck happen. Yeah. And yeah. that's, that is part yeah. of disconnection. So is disconnection, disconnection justifiable? In some circumstances, but I would say that it's 1% yeah. of the time. Yeah. 1% of the time out, and, of, out of 99. And I think in order for it to be disconnection, it's, and the hard thing is there's no real rules around it. And that's what makes it tricky as well. Because I mean, obviously disconnection would be the easiest option, just removing the situation, yeah. but it's not necessarily the most beneficial option no, because while you're disconnecting from people. Yeah. Yeah. Weird, you know, weird. there's, there's, sorry, Arthur, go ahead. Sorry, there's, there's so many things you won't learn about yourself. If you just start disconnecting with everyone, you know, you'll, you'll lose your confront. You'll lose so many aspects of your own being by doing that. Um, and then one day when you realize the opposite to reconnect with these people that you've disconnected from, man, that's going to be a job and a half. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's it, it is. If, if you do it right and you start change, stop a situation, a cycle of action, it can no longer have any sway. It cannot control you. And when you disconnect, mm. you're not doing that. There's something there that you are yep. leaving that is you're not being responsible for. And so is the other party. And we That's have right. we have a tremendous amount of technology for people who are potential trouble sources and the effect, the victim of a suppressive. And the last one is handling the suppressive through auditing, 
with the preclear who is the potential trouble source and it is an ot technology yep. and it works it works mm. you can handle somebody at a distance as as a pc or a solo auditor and get them to back off if they are dramatizing yep. something themselves it's an incredible technology so that's why i say 99% of the time you don't have to disconnect it's 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 a matter of you understanding the data and knowing the the varying degrees or levels of handling, which means you taking mm. responsibility for it and not just walking away. And we're running out of time here. So yeah. that brings us to fair game. Yeah. Mm. I'm curious about this one. I'm very curious. For me, I it's 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 one of those things that I struggle with with the subject is knowing that LRH implemented it at one point. Um, I think he did stop it though. Yeah, he cancelled no, it. In Bronze Journal sixty eight. He, he publicly announced that that fair game was was being stopped and that it did more harm than it did good. Yeah. So mm. it's it's something that I do struggle with a little bit because the church still practice practices it and they they get a lot of shit for it. Yep. Yeah. Because to me it. it 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 wouldn't make sense to do that. Like it 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 it, it goes sense. towards enforced. Well, yeah. sure it 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 does. I guess you. Know, I mean, you go back to the thing we were talking about about war and and all of that stuff, and 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 you get tired of having bombs sent upon you, and finally you just go, okay, my last nerve has been expended. We're going to send bo bombs back to them. But you know, uh, aggression begets aggression. Yeah, and I guess you know to try and. Uh ward off the enemies of Scientology if if you look at the Petri dish situation again and, and they're trying to, you know, keep it going or whatever, then yeah, I would I would say that I can see that, but I don't think it's a practical solution. Because I've seen time and time again the way you get through to people is through compassion, not through Yeah, with the technology. Aid. Yeah, the technology that we have, there's no reason to 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 do fair game yeah. you can handle it in other ways i mean you know as it as an ot yeah there are lots of ways different ways that you could handle it and i'm surprised that it wasn't brought up in actual ot bulletins and things like that because it can be handled it's yeah. just it's it's it goes above this podcast to talk about it but the technology is there on the ot levels to handle that mm. sort of thing yeah you just have to understand these things and i realized that towards the end latter part of hubbard's life he quite literally ran out of time and was was putting out more fires and and having his own problems physically more than anything but that was due to the suppression he was experiencing and he had crappy people around him yeah and so we have to like he said in 1950 build a better better bridge but at the same time respect the materials that 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 he gave us and that's that's tricky do you think fair game was like sort of a, a desperate attempt at uh, preserving the group, group preservation? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, when you're being attacked by governments, mm. what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I mean, you know, yeah. they, they give they them a hug. The get, yeah, they have the resources to make your life very difficult unless you own your own private island or islands or something like that. And even then they can cut your resources off and, and, you know, for lack of a better term, now it's just war. So I guess the question is what was the fair game policy? Because I think me, like probably a lot of yeah. other people think that it's, it's just, if, if you leave or you say something against Scientology, then, you know, the church has full right to come after you. Well, it, it basically just stated that if, if you've, you've tried every other means and it doesn't work, now you can litigate, now you can, can plant files, you can do, I mean, you can basically, all bets are off and you can do whatever you need to do in order to cessate the, the attacks. Was That's the IRS thing that, that, and that, that was an example of fair game? Yeah, and they, they use the fair game uh, concept against Scientology itself. Yeah, but what and I mean they planted is planted evidence and got people to do things that they wouldn't normally do based off of the evidence that they planted. Spoke to people; they had moles in the organization. Well, and it comes back down to that: if you want to control somebody, lie to them. That's what they did, and they got Mary Sue Hubbard put away for two years in a white collar prison and divided a, a power couple, and they were never the same again. Mm. 
that's that's what happened. So I've, they they applied fair game to them. That uh, that's black Dianetics and black Scientology. That's all it was. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go on the other side of the fence. Um, I I can kind of see a place for fair game, um, but a very specific place. You know, if somebody's um, consciously attacking you um, through slander, through mm -hmm. you know just doing really crappy things to you um i i don't see an issue with fighting back and making someone fair game um you know it's like sometimes you've got to be the lion um you know and if we look at say the black panther um, um response you know attack the panther um and i can kind of i mean that's probably you know a wrong way of putting it Mm -hmm. But I can kind of see a place for this, but a very specific place. You know, it's like once all options are exhausted, if this person's constantly ex attacking you or a group, um, then what's wrong with fighting back? Well, I mean, what else are you, what else are you going to do? Roll over and die or fight fire with fire? I mean, that's basically what fair game is, is fight fire with fire. And, and I think... And, and I can see how something like that can be so distorted because the moment you've got an issue with someone, let's fair yeah. game them. Right. You know what I mean? The first response, not the last response and not, you know, the, you know, I've tried, I've tried negotiating, I've tried resolution, I've tried this, 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 and this, you know, I've exhausted every possible option yet I'm still being attacked. You know, yeah, now you, it's you time, do? your yeah. fair game. Right. Yeah. So and and I kind of feel that was the original intention for it. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, let's imagine hundreds of people learn about this and it's like, what? You mean I can I can go and fair game someone? Right. And well, I'm going to go trash them right the now. Water. Right. <laughs> right. You, what, Same. And it's similar to the disconnection policy, you know, being the disconnection. Your first option is to disconnect. Right. You know what I mean? It's, right. it's the Take same the kind of, of least it's resistance the same kind of thing. Ways. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's the aggressive approach first, you know, as opposed to last resort. Right. Lisa? I'll say that when when we were fair gamed mm -hmm. uh, in, in the independent field, no less, um, it was it was very difficult. And maybe that's just my being this personally, but it was very difficult to to handle that shit every day. And, and and knowing yes. that you're gonna try and defend something because you believe in it so so much and stuff, you know. Whereas I think once we had just taken the 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 stance of flourish and prosper, that did more good than than any than anything could have done mm -hmm. than fighting back. In fact, we we mm -hmm. kind of st it was it was like we stooped down to that level, mm -hmm. and it just wasn't it, it wasn't as beneficial as just ignoring all the chaos that, right and, and lrh even said that he says yeah to the degree that that you give it attention is that you give it life and and when you don't yeah I, I, I mean you know if you have an arson that's burning down your buildings well okay you you, Fair you game. might want to yep. you, you might want to do something about that yeah but as best you can you don't need to acknowledge it. You don't need to communicate with it. And, you know, that kind of falls into you're not even disconnecting because you're not connecting in the first place. Mm. You just don't acknowledge it. Yeah. And then you just move on because uh, typically what, well, back to the state of man Congress again, why people don't like you lecture. Why are people criticizing and minimizing you? Because they've got overts on you. Mm. So there, you, there you have it. That that brings us to the last one, Scientology and its stance on mental health. Yeah, so I think a lot of people, <laughs> um, like that, and this also falls in line with the victim shaming thing that we are not we are not pro mental health, and we are just you know, we don't want people to be medicated if they really need it. And we're against, you know, th other therapists and everything that we're trying to uh, kind of 
have a monopoly on mental health and, and keep it to ourselves and stuff. And um, obviously that's not true. Mm -hmm. We we do feel strongly about medication because why why take medication when there isn't, like, like I said in a previous podcast, there literally isn't a... Uh, a, a brain thing it's not a brain thing like it is but it isn't so you make your yourself depressed it's not that depression makes you do you get, do you get what yep. i'm saying yep. and that's 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 the problem that i have and that's just a depression other things like anxiety as well i mean we have solutions and tools to um to cope in this modern world mm -hmm albeit difficult you can go out there and get some sun vitamin c d your omegas whatever mm -hmm. you have like where you can do exercise great for dopamine you have um you know auditing of course but but there's so many solutions and Ed tools education on yeah. it. you can't if you can't define something yeah. how can you know it yeah but the, the 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 number one thing is that people want people people want to be listened to about why they should be a victim so they go and they speak yeah. to somebody and and that's they think that's gonna you know solve the thing but then the therapist 99 t times 99 percent of the time will recommend medication oh you know what you're depressed let's not do this let's, let's, let's put a not do that over yeah and it's the same thing with with going to the doctor as well He's not asking you what your diet's like, how much exercise, how much water you're taking. Do you take mm. vitamins? Let's check your vitamin <laughs> levels. None of that stuff. You've got to, I, I, I have never, ever been recommended to check those things. I have to physically go in and say, I want this tested, please. And yeah, yeah. it's, it, it's ridiculous. Well, and, and you, was it last year you, was it a schedule two? That they gave you for something and they schedule didn't, six schedule schedule yeah. six medication for some something that was pretty pretty trivial yeah, and they was... didn't even tell you and you were like what the hell is going on yeah it was i think it was like yeah. colitis or something like that and um they gave me a, a schedule six medication which was uh it had it had benzos in it and that stuff made me so tired so depressed like i didn't want to do shit i didn't want to like nothing it was just like really 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 bad and he didn't even tell me that i would have these effects and and i still said to him listen i don't want to be taking these things if it's going to cause me a problem no it'll be fine yeah it'll be fine and it was the same thing yeah. recently <laughs> with with the doctor as well so i have a skin condition eczema and i had this rash on my arm and it seemed like pretty persistent so um i said to him look i don't know what it is and basically i i said it might be fungal because my eczema usually doesn't look this like this and so he gave me two things he gave me stuff for my eczema which is usual i do take it but then he also gave me a um a antifungal medication which i think was a schedule four mm -hmm. um and when I looked at the side effects online, I was like, I'm not taking this. <laughs> liver damage. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, just, just liver damage. You just might end up in hospital. Yeah. And and I yeah, just yeah. decided at that point, I was like, no, I'm not going to do this. And I started putting on the cortisone cream and the rash disappeared. So, you know, was it really fungal? I don't know. But he's supposed to be the professional. Um, so that goes back back to look, don't listen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's, mm -hmm. there's there's a there's a lot of go ahead. Sorry, I just want to mention that there is so much like uh, it is it's almost weaponized when you go when when you're on these social platforms and stuff and you ask advice and everybody is they're just so quick to say speak to your GP. I recommend you. Yeah, to have to you your seen doctor. a professional about the, your depression? Yeah, yeah, this is the first thing that they do. <laughs> You've got to see somebody oh. for these things. It is absolutely atrocious that we we as a community like there is no sense of community even anymore mm -hmm. because people i guess don't want to be held liable yep. for bad advice right and, and i get that but who the fuck makes yep. these people the professionals uh, and, and i need to yep. say that we are not a medical or legal professional and you need to consult your medical and legal professional <laughs> dare i say 
But uh, I'm saying that in a tongue in cheek type of a thing because you can see what's going on here. Yeah. So did something compel you to say that, John? Like did you did feel compel um, me to say like that. an underlying force where you needed to say that? Right. This this is this is uh, this yeah. whole conversation is for comedic purposes only. I want to state quote, it, unquote, I educational I purposes. Educational yeah. purposes yeah. only. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> read the room folks read the room oh, so, wow. we, we have completed the list and it is safe to say that uh, you are the captain of your own fate and the master of your soul and what happens to you is up to you with Dianetics and Scientology uh, it's only bad really bad if you believe it or anything else to be that way and you might want to educate yourself on these things that you think are bad or good or whatever and look up definitions uh mm -hmm. keep your own counsel and um keep listening to these podcasts and i think you'll find some value in dianetics and scientology the subject in independent scientology uh as far as the corporate church well that's up to you so Anybody have any other closing statements? I've got mine out of the way. Yeah, I'm good. Arthur? Yeah, I think I'm good too. Actually, you know, something along the lines of what you said, we're all captains to our own ship and um, all ships end up with rats on them. So barnacles. start looking for your rats. Yeah. Yeah. Start looking for your rats and yep. keep your ship clean. Yep. And you can find barnacles and rats on the O2 levels as well. And let me tell you, yeah, the results that you can get yeah. are nothing short of miraculous. Yeah. So for yeah. Arthur, a Scientology girl, and myself, um, read the Scientology, the subject book, an early version. We've got original copies you can get from us. Just ask us in the comments. Uh, get a free Dianetic session. Get some Scientology, auditing neurodynetics, continue your bridge if you've done Scientology and are sick of dealing with the corporate aspects of the corporate church. Come see us, get in touch. Go to collegeofindependentscientology.com as well and join our social platform. Uh, we'll see you in our next podcast. We love you and namaste. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.